are ready. We are going to be watching Spiffarific versus Magikarp. So this is your top eight. Let's head down to the action. Alrighty, welcome everybody to the top eight. Let's tell our players they are good to go. We've got Spiffarific on Ambition Valkyries. Sorry, chat. On a mission, Valkyrie's up against Magikarp, who I believe is on Huru Soldiers. Is that correct? Yep. So, Spiffarific with a really disciplined Mulligan there. So, it's like, okay, I have two power. I'm able to play a bunch of two drops. But really, I, I want the third power. I want my deck to start humming a little. It's kind of the free Mulligan because I'm going to have an equal distribution of two to four power. And I would very much... Like, if I just get another two power hand, it's probably just as good as this one. But I would love to just have three or four so this hand much better for them lots of removal spells watchwing support into a curve removal spells really good um for magikarp we have a curve that starts at one which is very strong against a deck that doesn't really have any one drop so that's how you're able to break serve if you play yeah. something on one that's addressed by a two then you're in a really good spot because you you kind of have like the tempo advantage yeah it's a good point darley a pretty good one drop to play good early good late Spiffarific going to take Shock Troops out of there with Exploit. Exploiting what Magikarp's got going on there. Shock Troops, yeah, it could be it could be good. It's it's a one drop. You know, it's not as good as Darlie, but you could you, you can play it. Get some Amplify going, and it gets out of hand if you can get the right fit for it. And here we go. We are going to use that Darlie ability to hit for five there on turn two. It hits pretty hard. Turns out, if you swing for five every turn, you do some damage pretty quickly. Yeah, if I recall correctly, there was only shock shock troops in hand, and this this one is was drawn off the top. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's paying respect to the fact that the Darley being five power kind of messes a lot of things up earlier on, but the the Deathwing providing a, a, a decent uh, enough roadblock such that it's going to trade with the Darley and needs an activation, kind of screwing up Magikarp's tempo a little bit. Um, sp spiffarific having this watching support on top. So being able to play the, the rail driver into the mm, watch nice. support, just yeah. free value. That synergy is really nice. That's a good way to take care of a shock trooper, basically getting a free removal spell there, essentially without having to spend a card on it. Pretty nice there. Free attacks in for Magikarp as well, though, on the way back. Going to start off with the Tara though. That's a good one to start with before you make that free attack. Let's get our war cry train yeah. going. Choo choo. Yeah, so um, b both decks kind of doing similar things where the Watchwing support is kind of like a Tara War Cry. Um, we're going to see the Silver Slicer here take down the Tara. So the. Iron Are we or the Argus, still... te Argus Technique, Mike? Oh, yes. I wonder if you fire Thank this you. up. Yeah. It's an interesting choice. I feel like you probably fire that off to keep that, but Magikarp going to say, no, I'm going to use that Argus Technique for something else. I'm going to keep that later. But yeah, has, so, so so what this telling what this is telling me is uh, kind of valuing that you can build up a bigger weapon through techniquing one of the iron priests, so you like get the power to last longer, sure, and then you still sure. have war cry. But speaking of bigger weapons, Spiffarific with a seven nine R blast here, and Argos technique can't really do much about that. Oof. Yeah, I, I do like that Spiffarific's uh, deck name is. But have you seen my R blast? <laughs> And now we haven't. It, it, appears, it appears to be a 5A. Better nerf it. Argo might be able to win best picture, but cannot stop a 7-8 weapon from killing your 2-2. But you get a rail driver for it, make it a 4-4, but still not looking amazing here. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so one thing that's pretty cool is that if... So Magikarp, if they were able to hit the enter button like, or spacebar quickly enough, might induce this attack where yeah. the Argo's technique is... Good call. So, Choosing to hold on to it, just really paying off there, and maybe allowing Magikarp to stay in this game that otherwise would have just been, you know, no units in play. Yeah, so holding that Argos technique, that one's pretty good there. And yeah, you're right, that, that may have been a really good play. Kind of kind of blanked a little bit of Spiffarific's turn there, because you can only attack with the one weapon. Oof, look at this Valkyrie warp. 9-5 heavy artillery here. Pretty good. Yeah, at least we still get a 4-4 four, four weapon for our troubles. Um, un un unfortunately, the Stormhall Concoction is a slow spell, so not able to use that as a trick here. But n normally, they say that life toll doesn't really matter, but what Magikarp's able to do here is you know, kind of buy their time, be able to use their life toll as a resource a little. Like, yeah, you have to spend the Vicious Overgrowth, but you don't have to commit, say, like, the Argo yet if you don't want to. 
Good point. And <laughs> in a way, almost a good thing they didn't because this quick draw silver slicer would have been pretty good against that Argo this turn. Still going to take five from it, so I'm not sure if it works out, but at least he didn't throw an Argo into a death trap there. But heavy artillery here. Gonna follow yeah, that kind, up. Kind of just kind of just swapping out that we can get another rail driver and another watchwing support trigger. All right, now that Argo is going to come down, that's just going to stun. Not not the stun you usually see when you play out Argo in a, in a soldier's deck. It's usually the <laughs> stun everything and attack for a bunch, but just getting that value stun on the rail driver Valkyrie here. Linex Molten Wing, the follow-up for Spiffarific, though, and that can do a bunch of damage here. That's going to kill off that Argo. And leave you behind I, with I, a I, weapon and a line axe here. So I do really like that the way Magikarp played was that if Spiffer if if Spifferific didn't draw line axe specifically, or I think that was really one of their only outs besides Deathwing. Like the Argo was just gonna take over the game. Like yeah. Spiffer Spifferific didn't have a good answer to a nine nine. So even though like Spiffervic might win this game, I think about games in terms of statistical probability, and it's really cool that there was a point in time where Magikarp was like maybe eighty percent to win the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but unfortunately, we're in twenty percent land. There you go, that value. So triggering off of that, and that's just going to be lethal for Spiffervic, getting both the damage off of the line axe plus the extra damage from the weapon. That's going to be it. Gory Ren, thank you so much for the follow. We really appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, let's take a look at Spifferific's deck real quick while we go to break here, or while we uh, wait for them to go to game two here. Updated. Right, so swatch it out. Let's swap it out for WSG okay. Ron's deck because, you know, they're very different. <laughs> yeah, so th this is what we saw in the previous marathon game, and you know, just lots of Valkyrie warp action there and uh, the Watchwing support just really able to allow for efficient sizing relative to rate on a lot of the cards um, and being able to keep up with a lot of the Warcry shenanigans that Magikarp was able to assemble. Uh, but I, I, I can really see this matchup going at either way, like between... Like, if the Soldier's deck is on the play and is able to start with the one drop, the texture of the game is very different. I, I think uh, Magikarp might have even won that game, even given those draws. But, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, this Valkyrie deck's pretty good. It's for real. You know, we saw it a lot on Friday, and it's still looking good here as well. I'll have to get a, I'll ask the TOs to give us a metagame count here for the top eight what our players have brought tonight but i don't know i've been pretty impressed with the valkyries deck we've seen so much valkyrie warp <laughs> you know i know it's uh, results oriented a little bit but i remember seeing these valkyrie decks and saying like wow if you could get a valkyrie warp like that's really cool that you can pull that off and we've seen it like a hundred times tonight like these decks can just do it so <laughs> consistently yeah well especially the the deck that we stream games has chosen to bring just they're playing way more valkyrie warp than anyone else oh right out the david the janitor is in town and drawing a vicious overgrowth i like the synergy that you can grab vicious overgrowth off of <laughs> off of janitor david yeah and, and that you can get power now off of it too that is true that, that makes that even better but the the sizing also being pretty good so without any help it does beat um specifically silver the silver slicer, slicer yeah. that yeah, yeah. so but but with the watchwing support, you know, if it's the next card, then it will be big enough to tussle with it. But br bringing the beatdowns really early on, that's that's kind of what you need to do in this matchup. Just really present a good clock and try to be more efficient than the Valkyries player. Yeah, I mentioned Valkyries pretty good. I do have the top eight count. So we had Ambition Valkyries, three copies in the top eight. Everything else is one ofs. So one ofs across the board and then three copies of Ambition Valks. Rounding out the one ofs are Male's Argentport midrange deck. I forget who brought that one, but we've got Argentport midrange deck that won last week. Huru Soldiers, which we see here. One copy of Menace Discard, Skycrag Control, and Tradition Soldiers. So two Soldiers decks, three Valkyries decks. Then we got Argentport, Menace, and Skycrag Control. So Magikarp just really building up whatever the next draw they're going to have is. So 
with, with all these war cry triggers. And if you end up killing, say, like the Dovid, then that tower is going to get bigger. If you kill the other tower, then the other tower gets bigger. If you kill the 5-5, five, five, there's still these war cry units in play. So kind of like rock and a hard place sort of situation for Spiff Horrific, but try and make the best of it, taking the overgrowth, because th that's the best way to have a blocker cleared. But uh, having this rail driver slightly pumped is pretty decent, but uh, the concoction in hands just kind of be able to burst through a little bit extra damage this turn potentially. Uh, thanks for the reminder in chat, everyone. I, I know we forgot that we missed that last game, but yes, the Argos technique only pumps soldiers. And so Tara being a paladin and now uh, the janitor being a cleric, uh, Argos technique in the plus two plus two in lifesteal cannot actually target any of these. So I'm sure many of you in chat knew that and were screaming at your screens. But for those of you who didn't know, these three cards are not, uh, these two cards are not actually soldiers. Uh, so Argos technique does not work for the, the combat trick mode. See, the, the real problem is like, you need to when someone misunderstands thing, you gotta you gotta come up with the the core of why they didn't understand it. So you're all assuming that I don't know the card types of any of these, but I know all my card types because of Blight Maw. The problem is I don't actually know what Argus technique does. I didn't know it only comes soldiers. Fair enough. So you guys reminding me that way doesn't do anything. You gotta attack it from the other angle sometimes. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, Magic R playing out Iron Priestess here, which is a soldier. Uh, Spiffarific top deck thing, Exploit. We'll start off with the Treasure Trove painting, deciding whether to do Exploit or Stonehammer, but let's get our attacks in first. Good, good habit to be in. Yep. Although I, I will say, Watch Wolf, that I was... I, when BK taught me magic many, many years ago the first time, uh, I mm. was always taught just play your land at the very end, do everything in your turn before playing your land. Uh, the number yeah. of times now that I've been in the habit of just like missing land drops because I just forget to play them at the end of turn. Uh, tough, <laughs> tough habit yeah. to get into. I almost wish I didn't so, learn that heuristic. Yeah, it, it's actually really interesting. So they say that because you want to like learn optimal play, but there's actually like some advantages, like if there's a that costs that amount of mana and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do is in deck construction, especially in limited, I determine whether or not I would play my power or land first. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have to premeditate for the match because it, using heuristics like that, you can get into trouble. Yeah, for sure. Well, I was talking over the end of that match, but Magikarp had an 11-11 unit to round things out there. No good answer from Spiffarific's side. So Magikarp going to take it on the aggro train there and they were able to push through enough damage to end that one uh, pretty soon, you're going to tie it up one game apiece. Yeah, so we see Magikarp stack here. Also, I have to note, you know, the only two times a misplay member has made the top eight of these are the two times I commentated. <laughs> so if you, you, you know, if you need a commentator like 12 times or something, I know some some people <laughs> on that might have heard that. So. Uh, but, but yeah, so we, we've kind of seen soldiers fallen out of favor in the format, but... Magikarp putting up really good results here, just being really lean, low to the ground, having enough tricks and removal, and, you know, the power of a cursed relic god itself, uh, just being able to stop the uh, stop the defense. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope we get to see some Manicles this game. <laughs> I hope so as well. It is interesting, yeah. It's kind of like we're reversing time a little bit here because Huru's and Valkyrie, <laughs> Huru soldiers and Valkyries is something that we saw at the beginning of the season. That was months ago in Expedition, and then it seemed like a lot of the rotation. yeah the wave kind of moved and swift shifted away from that. Then we had rotation, and now we're kind of seeing similar decks as before. <laughs> so we're coming back to that a little bit. Yeah, it's actually how I approach Expedition in general. Like I obviously wasn't playing in this event and haven't played much Expedition, but. What I try to do is I try to take previous decks and see if they still hold up while everyone else is trying all the new shiny things. And I, I'm like, I, I didn't really contribute to this Guru Soldiers deck at all, but it's doing pretty much exactly that. Just seeing like, oh wait, this archetype was powerful before. Is it still just good? And the answer appears to be yes. Wow, I love this curve. Look at this curve for, for Soldiers here. You've got Dara Lee right off the bat as your one drop. Then you've got Janitor Dovid, potentially your best two drop, drawing you another unit. And then you've got Tara coming down on turn three as a three drop. Hard to ask for a better one, two, three than that. Mm -hmm. But Spiffarific's got some answers, so we'll have to see if it's enough. Yeah, so, so one thing that's interesting here is like, you can choose between the Dovid and the Daru Lee for pumping. Because if you choose the Daru Lee and it gets blocked or, or dies, then the tower becomes really big. 
But the thing is, you kind of have to do it this way because what's more likely to happen is this play, where since you're not answering the line X, you know that it's easy for two of your units to die, so you rather just, they would just sink, sequence it such that they kill the Tara, then kill the Dire Lee if you pump the Dire Lee, or give the Dire Lee war cry. Mm -hmm. So you have to do it this way, and it leads to this board state, which is still fine uh, for, for Magikarp's side, but Spiffer Spifferific's coming very close to being able to stabilize, so... Well, so having two, a Valkyrie in play this whole time is really good for Valkyrie warp potentials. Two notable things here. So the second tower coming down, uh, it, it does stack. So Jenner and David now has Warcry 4, thanks to the two Taras that targeted it. Also, Magikarp did draw your favorite card, Manicles, there. Uh, and here we go. That's going to actually stun these to Texas. And this is going to be a big hit for Magikarp here, plus a big Warcry. Warcry 4 is going to be pretty big coming in on these two. Power of Manicles. Seven damage plus four Warcry, putting Spiff down to eight. So do you also spot that other card in Magikarp's hand that throws a wrench into Spiffrific's plan with the tower? Oh yeah, that overwhelm on the bear is pretty big, and that's pretty good. Yeah. Attacking and attacking yeah. with that molten wing. This is a lot of damage. Here it comes, Valise Bear Rider. Let's give everything Overwhelm. Plus one, plus one, and Overwhelm. Valise Navidad. <laughs> and that's nine. That's nine. You can put three in front of it. And, and like the worst part is you can't even kill the Dovid here, nope. even if you wanted to. Nope, can't kill the Dovid. So it demands a block of two. You can stick them all on the tower if you want, but... yeah. So, so at this point, Spifferific needs to think, like, what's the chain of draws I can get, and how do I line myself up such that I'm okay the next turn? Yeah. So you do have this line X in play. So if you draw, say, a heavy, the heavy costs four, so that's able to off the Valise. The Valise. You have, to, and then, like you have to defeat the Valise. That's your first threat. But it's, right. if, you, if you can draw something and then, that gets the Valise, then what do you do? Yeah, and then you have to use the line X to chump the uh the dovid which is why magic heart runs out this permafrost so that's heads up on their part very heads up there oh wow so if drawing a line x was like pretty interesting because we couldn't see if a valkyrie orb was going to happen if you get that into the sickle slicer you also live the next turn Ooh, good point that would have been but good think, but no no I, no valkyrie warp I coming for spiffrific the top deck uh the top deck Manicles might have might have been enough. <laughs> might have been it. That top deck Manicles was pretty good. And yeah, this these units are gonna have overwhelm. Magikarp can even put a rail driver if they want. There you go. That chill is gonna do it as well. And yeah, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be game. That's gonna be match. Magikarp is moving on to your semifinals. Congratulations, Magikarp. Looking pretty good here. Spifferific, though, you know, shake it off. Got their wild card slot. That's what Spifferific came here for. So no worries at all. So condolences, Spiffrific, but well played, Magikarp taking that one, and Magikarp's going to get to the top four.